Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, my dear brothers and sisters, wherever you may be, as we continue tonight with our tafsir of the Holy Quran. And just before I begin, our condolences this week on the martyrdom of Imam al Baqir alayhi salam and as well the martyrdom of Muslim bin Aqil alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all their intercession, insha'Allah. Surah 98 of the Holy Quran is a surah which is of the utmost importance when we look at the subject of guidance and the evidences that come in the form of guidance. Surah al bayyana I'm sure each and every one of you has read, but sometimes it doesn't look like the easiest surah or the easiest chapter of the Holy Quran to do a tafsir of. One thing that we cannot doubt is that each and every human being at one stage or another has looked for a path of guidance, has even asked for evidences regarding which path to take on in their life. There are some people who are more sincere in their search for guidance than others. You know, sometimes when you discuss with someone who's of a different religion, there's some of them, he'll say to you, bro, prove it to me. When you bring him the proof, he'll be like, you know what? I'm going to have to look into it further. This is interesting. There's another one who tells you that, listen, I'm not changing. I don't care if a miracle comes down from the heavens. This person may be a Muslim like you, but from a different sect. You've shown him every possible piece of evidence there could be. And until now, you'll see that he'll keep making excuses or she'll keep making excuses. You're like, bro, here it is clearly in front of you. As in, it's not in my book, it's in your book. It's in your particular piece of literature that you have followed or that you have admired. What else do I need to show you? So you have certain groups of people that when you provide them with evidence, with what is known as a bayina, a clear evidence, you have certain groups who will not listen. It doesn't matter how clear as day that Bayyana is, they'll come up with a million excuses. Now, those excuses, you might be told them sometimes, sometimes you're not told them. But one thing that we cannot deny is that you can also have those who are sincerely looking for guidance. They know it's not going to be easy for them to convert, for example. Because one thing we don't realize about converts is that as well as receiving different form of guidance that we cannot necessarily see, it's a big step for you to make a change from a path that your fathers had followed for so long. Can you imagine if you guys were living in Mecca or in Medina when this surah was revealed and you've been Christians generation after generation? Because we know it was only a few hundred years before this surah was revealed, Nabi Isa was alive, wasn't he? So imagine your family have been Messiah for how long? 300, 400 years. And you've been living in the same house all those years. The church for you on a Sunday is a place which you go to non-stop. You never miss a week in the church. And then someone comes to you with evidence that maybe, just maybe, your conception of Christ is not what is the reality. At that moment, would you have converted? Because there are many of us I think we are following the sect or the religion that we follow because our parents. I don't know how many of us are ready to challenge if clear evidence is shown to us. The aim of Surah al bayyana was to highlight to us that sometimes there are those when clear evidence is presented to them, they sincerely are looking for the truth. It doesn't matter what the name of the truth is. There are those, if you showed him evidence from now until the day of judgment, they have no intention of looking or changing from what their fathers followed. For me, when I rate a convert in the religion of Islam, it's because I sometimes look in the mirror and ask myself the question, would I leave my parents' way? That moment you have to tell your parents that I'm leaving their way is a moment which is huge because emotionally it's difficult for them. They've brought you up a certain way. When Surah al bayyana is being revealed in Medina, it is talking to groups 
Who are I, the polytheists, Abban An Jad? Or Masih Abban An Jad? Or Yehud Abban An Jad? Or people who are Jahala Abban An Jad? Jahal meaning what? There are certain tribes which follow the same practices without one person emerging from them who's like, come on, don't you guys ever want to look for guidance? This doesn't make sense, us bowing to this idol in this way. Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, arguably in the rank of the top three, four greatest companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Abu Dhar's tribe had followed the same customs. Even if you brought the sun down for them, he's not going to leave the way he bows to that idol. Abu Dhar was the opposite. From a young age, he knew that God offers you guidance in two ways. Either there's an inner prophet or an outer prophet. What's the two forms of guidance the human being has? Either the prophet internally or a prophet externally. What's your internal prophet? That's your internal prophet. That's why Al-Kafi begins with a discussion about the world of ignorance and the world of the intellect. Why do we begin with these discussions? Because it's an internal prophet to us that allows us to see when a bayina is in front of us, Either this bayina is a bayina which is truthful or not. My Lord, did I see my Lord with my eyes or did I see my Lord with my intellect? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I saw him with my eye. No, what, how did I see Allah? With my intellect. Therefore, the internal prophet is who? Is my intellect. With my intellect, I can find guidance if I'm sincerely looking for guidance. And that's why I always believe the people of Jahiliyyah, there were amongst their habits certain good things which meant with those good things, you can find Hidayah. The Karam of the Arab. Well, he might be a Jahil, but he has generosity. Salat al-Rahim. He's a Jahil. But Salat al-Rahim, in joining relations with one's relatives, was? There were certain months in the year, however much animosity they had with each other, they don't fight. Al-Ashhur al-Hurum, you've heard of them. What were they? Muharram, Rajab, al qada and al hijjah These months, the Arabs would say, no fighting. So therefore, with those traits in life, one thing you cannot deny is guidance will always be available for you as long as you're looking. The problem for some is whether they can break the shackles of the baggage they carry at that moment when they see the bayina, the clear evidence is in front of them. Surat al-Bayyina's whole aim is to show you that we have never left you without guidance. But when that guidance stood in front of you, did you accept the guidance or not? Was India and China guided the same way as Mecca and Medina? Of course it was. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never leave an area without guidance. Therefore, one of the interpretations of this first ayah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة. طبعا this first ayah has had the scholars of tafsir battling over it for years. One ayah. What could be the meaning of this ayah? Because normally we just go to the translation. But translations can sometimes be very bland. It doesn't take you to the spice. And the real issue, one meaning of it is what? Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance wouldn't leave the followers of the book or the mushriks. Allah would never leave them and leave them in a state of misguidance until clear evidence has been given to them. Once that clear evidence is given to them and they reject it, there's no more guidance. 
لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين those who disbelieve from the followers of the book and the polytheists Allah will never separate them from evidences and guidance until he puts evidence in their face and they keep saying no because you know what I would say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would say Ya Allah how could you expect me to follow you when you've never sent me a guide or a clear evidence of following you? In the Quran, Allah replies back to me, لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَكِينَ مُنْفَك مِنْ اتفق شغلة What does it mean? Yeah? You're separating. تفكيك Maybe opening up. God when he talks of those who disbelieve from amongst the followers of the book and the polytheists, he never leave them separated away from his guidance until the bayina comes to them. Because if a bayina while I'm in Medina, clear evidence doesn't come to me, then I can turn around and say, why did they have Jesus? And they had Moses? They had Sulaiman? Where's our leader? Where's our guidance? Where's the one we should follow? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Shia theology we also believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just if he wants us to worship him he would have to send an example of a person who guides us towards how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala otherwise I can turn around to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Ya Allah where was your hujjah on earth to show me how to worship you what is a prophet or an imam in one of the many meanings one of the many definitions one who is sent by the Lord to guide us as to the best way in which we can follow the guidance of the Lord. Likewise, at the same time, therefore, when a person says to me, did Allah send a hujjah or an evidence or a bayina, a clear evidence? Because the bayina is bayina shaghla. Makes it clear. When you say to someone, bayin li shaghla, please, I'm not understanding. Why do you say I'm not understanding with Gula Bayin Liya? Because you're trying to say to him, listen, make it clear. Ana and Umur, until now, they're not clear for me. Bayin, I'll make it clear to me what exactly happened. So, therefore, Surah Al Bayin, the aim of it, the first meaning of the first ayah is, I would never leave Ahl al Kitab or the Mushrikun, the ones who even were disbelievers from them, I would never leave them without giving them a clear evidence. How could you think? That even if one of my creation is in a path of misguidance, do you think I would leave him without showing him a moment of evidence? I'll show him wherever he may be. In China, in India, Africa, every part of the world had a guide who gave clear evidence. If you look in Surah 13 verse 7. Surah 13 verse number 7 of the Quran. If anyone ever asks you, were their prophets sent to every part of the world? This is the proof. Because we know very well. Look, there's 25 prophets mentioned in the Quran. Do you agree? There's 124,000 they say were sent to the people. I know we only have 25 in the Quran. So there must have been NBA who are sent to Al Hind or Sin or Afriqiya or all other places. Okay? لَوْلَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِ And those who disbelieve say, why has not a sign been sent down upon him, upon him, from his Lord? إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَاد You are only a warner. There is a guide for every people. لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَاد means what? Means we have not left a part of this earth without sending evidence. Sometimes the evidences are on the horizon. Sometimes the evidences are within yourself. Sometimes all you needed to do, there are how many people tell you, Anna, I saw one of the creation of Allah, I realized there must be a creator. Hada, what was his evidence? The beauty of a mountain, the beauty of a waterfall, the beauty of a sea, the beauty of a creation in the human body. Those evidences are evidences as well. Likewise, you find that there are other forms of evidence. So therefore, the first meaning, I want to give three meanings to the first ayah. First meaning, those who disbelieve from amongst the followers of the book, Ahl al-Kitab. Why not Ahl al-Kutub? Ahl al-Kitab, Ahl al-Kutub, Ahl al-Kitab. Because Torah, Injil, Quran, so why call it Ahl al-Kitab? One message. One message. 
Originally, they're all one message. Now, those who disbelieve from amongst the followers of the book and the polytheists, I would not separate my guidance from them until there has come to them clear evidence. I'm sure all of you would agree with that. Now, second meaning, what is it? Imagine it in the form of the question. Imagine this ayah in the form of a question. Did not those who disbelieve from amongst the followers of the book and the polytheists say that we are looking for a clear evidence? So show us that evidence. Imagine it. لم يكن الذين, as if you are saying, لم يكن الذين كافروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين يقولون. Can you imagine it in that way? That did not those who disbelieve from amongst the followers of the book. This is in the form of a question. That did not those who disbelieve from amongst the polytheists and the people of the book say, we will not separate from what we believe until you give us a clear bayinah. Because how many times would they say to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, we won't believe in what the message is until you give us a clear evidence. Surah 17 verse 91, they start asking for some of the most ridiculous things. Because you know, when a person doesn't want to be guided, even if you show him clear guidance, they keep making excuses to you. Even if you show him the clearest guidance, that person keeps making excuses to you. So they start saying things like, you know, if, 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 if you came to me and you're like, um, you're like to me, listen, Ahna, we, you know, we've been sent on behalf of the Lord to guide you. And then I reply with Surah 17 verse 91. Um, okay, then you know what? Uh, make a garden of palms and grapes and you should cause the rivers to flow and you should cause the heaven to come down upon us in pieces or bring Allah and the angels face to face or you should have a house of gold or you should ascend into heaven and we will not believe in your ascending until you bring down to us a book which we may read. Now these are absurd things to ask for. Yeah, what they're saying is, you're telling us there's a Jannah, yeah? Bring the Jannah here on this earth. We want to see that Jannah over there, bring it down on the earth. Always you'll see that Ahl al-Kitab wal mushrikeen for years will always have these excuses they come up with. The Quran here is saying, didn't you people say that you won't leave your path until we show you an evidence? Then we are going to show you a bayyana. Okay, that's the second reason. Third thing is, these people لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة means those people who disbelieve from أهل الكتاب and from the مشركين they would not have separated from their way unless you gave them a magnificent clear evidence it has to be something amazing it has to be something amazing for him to leave his family who are Yehud all that time. My brother, who's Christian and Jewish, when he leaves his family becomes Muslim. It has to be a big evidence for him to change. Do you agree? Someone who's been calling Christ the Son of God his whole life. Someone who believes in the Holy Spirit. Someone who believes, for example, in particular stories of the Torah or the Bible. Someone who's been giving food to his idol outside his house for 20 years. Here, what's the ayah saying? لم يكن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين منفكين حتى تأتيهم البينة means those who disbelieve from these were never gonna separate unless you gave them an evidence that was so clear. Only then did they separate. What was the evidence? رسول من الله. Is there a more greater evidence? The evidence here was who? Rasulun. Sometimes the tanween, when you see it, sometimes a person just reads and says, well, Rasulullah, Rasulun, it's all the same. Sometimes tanween is there for ta'zim, a magnificent prophet from your Lord. In Arabic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just say, say Rasulu, Rasulah, Rasulun. Each one has a meaning. I might be calling the Prophet, I might see a Fatha on top of Rasul. I might be speaking about the Prophet, I might see a Dhamma. But when I want to say magnificent, then there is a Tanween that talks of a particular Ta'zeem to this man. Yes? Rasulun min Allahi. 
a, a messenger from Allah reciting what? Yatlu suhufan mutahara. What's his mission? Firstly, these people have been following a path for years. Whatever evidence you're going to have to give them is going to have to be a magnificent evidence. It cannot be someone or something simple. And truly, this man was magnificent. Because, you know, to live 40 years of your life, never ever being noticed by anyone as telling a lie or having bad morals or having a slip up is, is impeccable, really. Many of us, maybe in our teenage years, we have a slip up of six months, one year, two years, three years, where we look back and we think to ourselves, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa I didn't follow my life as I should. For you to live a life of such impeccability that even when you become a prophet, there are some from the mushriks who leave their deposits with you. They hate you, but they trust you. <coughs> How magnificent is this man that for 40 years of his life, I tell you, if he had once lied, they would never believe. There are some people who were so on shirk. Do you know how big it was for them to leave? <clears throat> Bilal used to look after the temple of Umayya bin Khala. He used to look after the temple. Do you know what it means for a black slave to look after a temple in, in Arabia? Hey, but your life is sorted. Then you're the slave of an aristocrat and you're the one who looks after his temple of idols. That means that you're the gatekeeper for a very wealthy CEO. That means your life is pretty much sorted. Why would you leave that path unless the bayina that you saw was magnificent? Salman went from one place to another looking for that bayina. Miqdad ibn al-Aswad was searching that bayina. Ammar bin Yasser, when he met the Bayyina, he was in disbelief. Abu Dhar al-Ghafari left his whole tribe to come on that Bayyina. Mus'ab bin Umar comes from the wealthiest Arab family. Who would leave a mansion to come and live with a man who has a few friends? Who would? Unless that man has a charisma about his character which is unique. And that man, what he is presenting you also has to be what? Has to be pure from all impurities. Yes? Yatlu alayhim. Huwa taban shinu. The Rasulun min Allah. Yatlu. We know that the message of the Holy Prophet is always with this word, yatlu. If you look in Surah Al-Jum'ah, all of you have recited this ayah. I bet you, Salat Al-Jum'ah, every week when you go, you hear this ayah, Surah 62, verse number 2. If anyone ever asks you, what is a message or a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In Surah 62, verse number 2, towards the end of the Quran, you'll always see this particular ayah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard al-malik al-quddus al-aziz al-hakim. Huwa al-ladhi ba'atha fi al-ummiyyin rasoolam minhum. First thing, the evidence is from one of you, one of your own people. Yeah? You had to have an evidence from amongst you because you know his history. You know very well that he's not some guy who utters absurdities or craziness, but rather he's a man who is a man known for being sadiq and being ameen. Rasul huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyin rasulam minhum. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi. What did the second ayah of Surah Al-Bayyina say? Rasulun min Allah yatlu suhufan mutahara. Here, it said huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyin rasulam minhum. Yatlu alayhim. Ayatihi, وَيُزَكِّي him. He purifies them because you cannot be someone who talks about purity and you yourself are impure. You cannot talk of tazkiyat in nafs and you've got the biggest diseases in your nafs. He would purify them. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And he teaches them the book and he teaches them the wisdom. That comes from this book. Therefore, let's go back to Surah al bayyina The bayyina therefore, that came to Ahl al-Kitab and came to the Mushrikun was what? Was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had known that the Mushriks were following a way which was deviated. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had seen that Ahl al-Kitab who had the book amongst them had now diverted away from who? Away from the path of the messengers. مثلا, Nabi Musa alayhi salam or مثلا, who? 
نبي عيسى عليه السلام رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة recites pure pages صحف is normally you know when you ask someone what's in the صحف today what's in the papers today هذا صحفي means هذا journalist okay فيتلو عليهم صحفا مطهرة means that these are pure pages away from the impurity of being corrupted or altered okay يتلو عليهم what رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة فيها now this is interesting صحفا مطهرة فيها كتب قيمة what's كتب if you are reading a book and it says رسول من الله يتلو صحفا مطهرة فيها كتب that means, hold on a minute. Does that mean that he would be, for example, reading and inside it there's books? Does that make any sense? Ah. Can you think of any times Allah uses kutiba? Ahsan. Kutiba alaykum as siyam means fasting has been prescribed as a law. Therefore, he recites to you pure pages. Within it are laws which will sustain you in life. Because you mentioned to me, Kutub Surah 2 verse 183. All the viewers would know the verse about fasting. But in the verse about fasting, my dear brothers and sisters, the word I want you to focus on is Kutub, prescribe. Because the way a pharmacist prescribes for me medicine to cure me, the laws are prescribed to bring a way for us to be cured from diseases in society. Surah 2 verse 183. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O you who claim to have belief. Kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you. The point here is interesting. You people, Ahl al Kitab, what am I giving you that's different from what the messengers before me were talking? They talk to you about fasting. I'm talking about fasting as well. Why would you reject me? Here, the Quran has ordinances that were there before. Ya ayyu al ladina amanu, kutiba alaykum as siyam. For example, likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may say to us even about, for example, salah. Has the word kitab ever been mentioned with salah? Anyone know the ayah about Allah talking about times of salah are prescribed for you? Surah 4. Verse 103. We read, yes? We said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu We agreed? In Surah 4, verse 103, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us all, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban mawquta the prayers have been made a timed law for the believers. Kitab, fiha kutub. Kitab, ordinance. Kitab, prescription. Kitab, law. Because there is this recognition that a path of God cannot be without a legal system. Even society cannot function if there's no law. You know, sometimes people's biggest pet peeve with religion, what is it? Too much law. Do you agree? How many times do you hear people saying to you, Bob, all the time, all I hear is Sharia, fiqh, fiqh, Sharia. Bob, it's all about the heart. I don't agree with you. I agree with you. It is about the heart. You need to have a pure heart. But you drive 85 miles per hour out there, your pure heart doesn't stop you hitting that kid. So that's why the law had to put a camera. Because the law knows the way the human being works. The moment we see white lines in the middle of the road, we're like, hmm. You get past the last of those white lines. Why? Because for us, if there isn't a law or an ordinance, we're going to destroy society. 
Therefore, when someone says, why does Islam have so many laws? Those laws are like, you could ask the question, why does the British government have so many laws? Why do many governments have laws? Why is there qawaneen? For what reason? Because this is prescribed to keep society in check. In the past, the laws for a camera driving, maybe 50. They realized, no, there's still people dying. 30. They realized, no, take it down to 20. Now, me and you, I disagree. But we recognize that we have to abide by the law. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran wanted us to realize a religion without a legal system is one which is doomed for destruction. Why is it doomed for destruction? A, we the human being, forgetful. B, rebellious. Even if there is a law, it says, Inna salata kanat ala kitaban mawquta. Still you'll see people praying dhuhr at 9 o'clock. Salat al-dhuhr or it's called Salat al-Maghrib? I'm not understanding. No, no, I'm praying at 9. You never had in seven and a half, eight hours from 1 o'clock till 9. You never had three minutes spare. Now, the person still prays, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in salata kanat ala al-mu'minin kitaban mawquta. There are timings which are prescribed. Ya ayyuhal ladhina aminu kutiba alaykum as-siyam. If it wasn't prescribed, I guarantee you, shahar Ramadan, we would not fast. I guarantee you. Ehna bil guwa, we're fasting shahar Ramadan. This is after crying, nagging, time, high, this, that, just about. These laws are for our spiritual growth as well. Therefore, when the Quran said Fiha it was saying that within this book there are certain laws, and these are the laws which hopefully will guide you. But there's a reality as well. The reality as well is that the moment that clear evidence has come, there's gonna be people who are gonna differ into different groups. There's no denying that. That now this evidence, whether it's Musa, Isa, or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, وَمَا تَفَرَّقُوا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ Those who were given the book didn't become divided, except after clear evidence has come to them. Even when the clear evidence comes to them, they only then get divided. There's an interesting ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, which always highlights to me that, you know what guys, there was a time we all agreed with each other. But the reality is that when guidance comes to you, sometimes it's not easy to hold on. So sometimes you differ, Surah 2 verse 2, 1, 3. Sometimes you differ. Sometimes some of you hold on to that guidance, some of you don't. Some of you make excuses, some of you don't. So if you look in Surah 2 verse 2, 1, 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and this is a beautiful ayah, because it highlights to us that we were all one nation. All people were are a single nation. Okay? Allah raised prophets as bearers of good news and as warners. And he revealed with them the book with truth that might judge between people in that which they differed. Subhanallah, bayinat here. Look what Allah is saying. Allah is saying all of you were one nation. You were all one. When my prophets came to you, it really showed the difference between those who held on and those who wanted to live a different life. Because remember, religion, some people don't like it. They don't want that. They go like, Baba, I want to be free. The Shinu, you're telling me this is haram, that's halal. This is haram, that's halal. These kutub that you prescribed, sayam or salah, or kutub alaykum idha hadara ahadakum al mawtu intaraka khayran al wasiya. I have to write a wasiya. Kutub alaykum al qital, kutub alaykum al qisas. Too many laws. For what happens is, there are some who take advantage of that bayna. They hold on to it. There are others know, and the Quran says what? Quran says that this book we gave you with truth, it judges between people and that which they differ. None but the very people who were given it differed about it after clear arguments had come to them, revolting amongst themselves. Revolting amongst themselves. 
Therefore, in Surah al bayyina what it was saying was that وَمَا تَفَرُّقُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَ Those who were given the book did not divide. Now, given the book. Here it's not books. Those who were given the book. That's the whole of humanity, by the way. Whether the human takes the book or no is not my concern. All of you received the guidance. You want to be mushrik, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, you cannot deny the Quran is sold in your bookshop in a country. That those who were given the book, those who were given the book, they did not become divided except after clear evidence had what? After clear evidence had come to them. So when the Quran therefore was saying, وَمَا تَفَرَقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ اللَّهِ مَنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْبَيِّنَةِ It was trying to show us that when a bayina comes, don't think everyone's going to hold on to him. There are some who will. Why? Because they realize that what he's saying is the basic precepts of those who came before him as well. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَا وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَا This is the very meaning of religion, this one ayah. This one ayah is the meaning of religion. What did the Prophet ask them to do? Has he asked them to do some mathematical equation where you need to be an expert in some really difficult course? وَمَا أُمِرُوا All they were ordered to do was what? يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ Worship God. They serve God in the process of that worshipping. And sincerely, the main thing is sincerity in their servitude. And then as well, what? That they go in that direction, Hunafa. What's Hunafa? What's a Hanif? A Hanif is someone, the peer pressure will tell him, don't listen to the Bayyina. He says, it doesn't matter what you say, the Bayyina is too clear for me not to listen to. <laughs> Nabi Ibrahim, was an ummah by himself. Do you agree? What do we always associate with Nabi Ibrahim? He was Hanif. Don't we always say Ibrahim was a Hanif? Hanif, what does it mean? Some people say Hanif means those group of people who are following the path of God. Those are the ones who are known as the Hunafa or the Hanifs. In a way it's right, but it doesn't take you to the very gist. The gist is, imagine the tides of the sea are pushing you from direction to direction, but you hold firm, swimming in the middle of them. The tides are trying to tell you, don't listen to him. Hada majnoon, hada sahir. You're like, but his evidence is clear. Yeah, but if you join him, we're not going to be your friends anymore. But his evidence is clear. Religion requires somebody who in the face of peer pressure remains strong. How many times in your age group have you had friends who are like, bro, why are you being, trying to be religious? It's like, enjoy life. You're like, bro, you know what? I can enjoy life, but I can't go to where you guys want to take me. No, 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 but bro, just one week. Is that we just go for one week? Or we just go and do this tonight? Or just tonight only? A Hanif is one who in the face of peer pressure remains strong. The idea here was that religion was وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ And do what? وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ Now, يُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةِ Why are they mentioned? Because they are examples of what? Examples of the meaning of religion. Some things which are acts, which are in the world of what? In the world of worship. Others which are acts which are social. Was Rasulullah the first to speak about the fact that my message is about أَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةِ Or were there prophets before him who mentioned this? Who could you give me as an example of a prophet before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, who made it clear that the role of religion is what? Is for you to serve God sincerely. Try and stay on the right path. Once you've seen that evidence, establish salah and give away zakat. Who said it the day he was born? Could only be one. Surah 19. Surah Maryam. You see Nabi Isa alayhi salam. Nabi Isa alayhi salam in Surah 19. From verse number 1, we see the story of that particular period of time. And then when Nabi Isa alayhi salam spoke, what did Nabi Isa alayhi salam say in verse 30 of Surah 19? 
in verse number 30 qala inni abdullah i am a servant of god atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiya he has given me the book and made me a prophet wa ja'alani mubarakan aina ma kunt he has made me blessed wherever i may be wa awsani bis salati wa zakati ma dumtu he has enjoined upon me salah and zakat does a prophet have to pray or no is it wajib on a prophet to pray is it wajib on a prophet to also pay taxes yes a person cannot turn around and say because i'm a prophet i cannot pay any tax you have to pay the tax nabi isa from the day he spoke wa awsani bis salat salat which salat doesn't have to be the meaning of salat today salat originally what does it mean dua the original meaning of the word salat is dua the fiqhi technical meaning which has evolved is the salah we pray today zakat originally what does it mean what does zakat mean if someone tells you tazkiyat in nafs or zakat or zakiha what does it mean in english tazkiyat in nafs what would that be in english tazkiyat in nafs What would that be? Ahsant. Zakat is to purify. When you give away from yourself, you're purifying your soul. So therefore, zakat doesn't only mean 2.5% of your earning on the following... No, no, no. Zakat in its origin means purification. There is a zakat for your wealth. There is a zakat for your health. There is a zakat for every aspect of our life. A zak what's the zakat? Of for example, knowledge and the scholars is that they give away and teach. That's their zakat. Okay? So therefore, when it said, وَمَا أُمِرُ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُ الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ Deenu al This is the right religion. This is the meaning of religion. Serving Allah, but sincerely. Because some people will serve Allah, but to show off. Serving Allah, sincerely. Holding on in the middle of a lot of pressure. Not going to be easy. You're going to have to hang in there. Establish your salah. Give away zakat as well. Don't just be of those who praise, but is stingy. That is the right religion. Therefore, in this first part of Surah al bayyana there was this introduction as to the clear evidences that comes towards these people. What happened with these people is that they split into two groups. Once we come back from our short break, we'll look at these two groups and see the wonderful mentioning of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Each and every one of us makes sacrifices for our lives. We do this to help those that are close to us, like friends and family. This Eid al-Adha, donate to IHDRF, the Imam Hussein Charity. We are providing the Biha and Qurbani for Africa, Yemen, and of course, the holy city of Karbala. All meat will be distributed to those impoverished families suffering from hunger. You can donate via our website, www.ihdrf.org. Donate to Karbala today. $250 for a full Qurbani, $125 for a half a Qurbani and $65 for a quarter Qurbani. Donate at www.ihdrf.org. Each and every one of us makes sacrifices. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters. So here we have it. Medina, there are people of the book, there are polytheists, and the Bayina has come to them. You know, there's a clear evidence. A man who is the most upright model of servitude of God. He's a man who's sincere, a man who holds himself in the middle of pressure from everywhere. A man who has come in Medina and he has clearly said, the synagogues of the Jews remain. The churches of the Christians remain. I don't need to get a church and convert it into a mosque. No, that church can remain where it is. The church, Methel and Ka'bad Najran, of the people of Najran. The Jews, their synagogues can remain. Um, and we can all live together in peace. You had two groups that emerge. Because sometimes when you have that clear evidence amongst you, there are those who take him for granted, there are those who follow him, and there are those who fight him. 
Look at the groups. Because you have those who ended up fighting this man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his family as a guide to these people, as the clearest bayyina possible. What more do you want me to do for you? My character is not enough for me with my message. Have you ever seen a contradiction between my message and, my, and what? And my character? You haven't. But instead, they decided to fight him. And the Quran said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna al-ladheena kafaroo min ahl al-kitab. Now, from amongst ahl al-kitab, we have to make clear. Well, mushrikeena. Min can sometimes be min al-tab'eed. There's always that debate on the on the ayah, Surah 9, verse 100. Was sabiqoon al-awwaloon min al-muhajirin wal ansar. Min is vital. Because that min says from amongst. When you say to me that the ayah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابُ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا رِدَ عَمَّمِ الشَّهْلَةِ I don't want to say all أهل الكتاب and all the mushriks were enemies of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله Because I guarantee you there were some who looked like they were his best friends who were his biggest enemies. They were mushrik, but in front of you they're Muslim. Because there's a surah called Al-Munafiqoon, surah 63. Here, what does it say? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ From amongst أهل الْكِتَابِ, there were those who were covering. What did we say? The word kufr, cover. Never forget this, please. Anyone who wants to see two words which are close to each other in Arabic and English, أرض, earth. Kufr, cover. Don't forget this. أرض, earth. Kufr, cover. A kafir, I don't have a problem with a kafir except on two fronts. Number one, covering the truth. Number two, stop using their head, they stagnate. And evidence has come to you, you still stick to what your parents follow. What is it that he's giving you, what Jesus did not say, which Moses did not say? Because you know, by that time, what had happened to Christianity? Christianity after Christ went in two directions. One may argue there was the direction of Simon and James. That's one direction. The other direction is St. Paul. There was a direction where God, serving one God, following the laws of God, that was one direction. Another, God Father, God Son, God Holy Spirit, and the laws you don't have to necessarily follow. How many times do you meet a Christian who says, because Jesus died for us, the laws don't apply to us anymore. You're like, bro, but... You know, and it's written, the flesh of the swine is not allowed for you to eat. Yeah, but Jesus died, so now we can. After, after, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, if you look in, I think, 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament are Paul. Paul's letter to so-and-so, Paul's letter, do you agree? Mm. Yani Paul has a huge position in Christianity. A huge position. You found therefore that there were some who held on to the teachings, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But there were some from the Christians who joined. Therefore, in الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ Amongst Ahl al-Kitab, there were those who were good. But there were those who disbelieved and those who covered. They know that this man has already been spoken of before. They know the Prophet, peace be upon him and, and his family, has been mentioned before, but they cover it up. And the mushriks, they also know about him and they cover it up. What does the Quran say? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا That those who disbelieve from amongst the followers of the book and the polytheists shall be in the fire of hell. Of course, this could easily apply to a Muslim if the Muslim covers the truth as well. If a Muslim covers the truth, then they could easily be put into this bracket. Why would this ayah be revealed? Because Rasulullah is giving an implicit message to the Muslims as well. Don't cover the truth. When I tell you and I praise someone, don't later on say I couldn't hear or I can't remember. Wallah, some Muslims memory loss in the books of hadith is unbelievable. Unbelievable. How many times do you hear in Wallah in a hadith, how many times have you read a hadith where it says, and I forgot what he said at the end? Baba Shinai. Every single time one man is praised, we forgot at the end what was said. Or if something really bad was happening, they'll say, and I forgot what took place after this. In the areas that concern you, you never forget. Ali ibn Abi Talib, everything you forget. 
and the areas that concern you, you never forget. The moment it's about Amir al Mu'mineen, completely forget. Allah doesn't forget. Why? Because in the next ayah, what does he say? Allah. People ask me, Sayyidina, Shia Sunni started after Rasulullah died? You know, sometimes people say to you, why do you call yourself Shia, Sunni? Just say I'm Muslim. My prophet was the one who mentioned the word Shia. What do I do? When this ayah was revealed, go and read as many sources as you want. And you know me, I don't care about sources in other schools in Islam in all honesty. If my books are saying it, why do I need to prove it in other people's books? And I have my books. That's because we have been bullied so much in history as Shia. We're scared to mention things in our books. So we always say it's in there. No, Baba, it's in my book. But even this ayah, go to the books of Tafasir. Always faith and action. Don't just come and tell me, I love and I believe. Act it. They asked Rasulullah who is this? What did he say? When was this? After Rasulullah died? During the life of Rasulullah. Why? Because the Quran already had a sunnah. What was that sunnah? It was that you could be a prophet and you could be a Shi'i. Because a Shi'i means you are a follower of. In the Quran, Allah says Ibrahim was a Shi'i or a Shi one of the Shi'a of Nuh. Go to Surah 37, verse 83. Because someone might say to you, Bro, you know what? We call ourselves Shi'a. Why are we calling ourselves Shi'a? And sometimes the Shi'a, unfortunately, have the biggest inferiority complex. It's unreal. You know, sometimes I look at other schools in Islam and honestly, honestly, I admire how proud they are of what they follow. But with us, it's like we want to make everyone happy. Surah 37, verse number 83, the Quran mentions, وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيْعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ One of his Shia was Ibrahim. Shia of who? Nuh. Nabi Nuh. One of his Shia was Ibrahim. Ibrahim was one of the Shia of Nuh. وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيْعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله When this ayah was revealed إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ The complete embodiment of perfect Iman and perfect action with Iman is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And that's why, do you know there was a stage people wouldn't call Imam Ali anymore? They'd call him Khayr al Bariya. Wherever he'd walk, there's Khayr al Bariya. There's Khayr al Bariya. There's Khayr al Bariya. Because Khayr al Bariya in contrast to Sharr al Bariya. Sharr al Bariya, what did we say it was? Worst of people, of the men and the jinn. Al Bariya, men and jinn. Let's say, for example, oh, a creation generally. Best, let's say men and jinn are the highest of the creation. Well, I'm not going to compare you to plants or animals, although. Some people in Islamic history should be. But if I can say, Sharr al then in Sharr al you have the worst of the human jinn. This ayah, Inna al-ladheena amanu wa amilu salihat What are they? Ula'ika hum khayr al Misdaq of this ayah is who? When Imam Ali would come, they say, Ja'a khayr al When he'd leave, Dahaba khayr al bariya Hada khayr al bariya Ali wa shi'at. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would make it clear. Ali and his shi'a are these people. The best of creation. Some of my turn out to say, isn't it? Some of his Shia are, are quite nasty, bro. I'll be like, you got a point. You got a point. Ooh, some of his Shia. Envy galore. Jealousy. Hate. I can't deny that. But the purest of his Shia, Khayr al bariya Someone might say, what do you mean Ali ibn Abi Talib is the embodiment of Iman on the day of Khandaq when he fought Amr ibn Wid? Did not Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi say the whole of Iman fights the whole of Kufr? The whole of Iman fights the whole of? Find me one companion of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, who he said he is the whole of Iman. Say that this person has Iman, this person believes. The whole of Iman is him. Fighting the whole of 
كفر إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك هم خير البرية What is the reward for Ali and his Shia? جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنات عدن Their reward with their Lord is gardens which are eternal تجري جنات عدن تجري من تحتها الأنهار How we always read it where there are rivers which flow. Rivers which? Now, someone might say, say, you know, why rivers? I think, on the one hand, in life, you don't always get to live near a river. And when you do have a chance to live near a river, it's a beautiful feeling. So if you're going to explain to an Arab, first thing, Arab living at that time is proper hot. Any mention of water is going to be nice. To actually think you're going to have a river right outside you, you know, Iraq might look at, Dijla and Farat, Arabia, you'd have to travel quite a bit. You know, you might have a couple of oases, but to get to this sea and that sea is not easy. You don't, when you go to Mecca and Medina, you just see rivers in the middle of town. You don't go to Europe where you might see a river right through town. So on the one hand, if I'm going to promise you a river, it's a nice feeling. What's the difference with these rivers? You can never imagine them. Because they're different streams of rivers. Surah 47, Surah 47, verse number 15, I think. I think, if I'm not mistaken, should be... Okay. Subhanallah. Just look at this ayah. Surah 47 verse 15. Allah gives us the parable of what? Mathalul Jannah. The example of Jannah. For those who are known as the people of Taqwa. There are rivers of water that don't alter. Rivers of milk, taste that doesn't change. Rivers of drink, delicious to those who drink. Rivers of honey, clarified. For them, they're in all the fruits and protection from their Lord. How many different anhar are there? And so normally when you hear, Jannatin tajrim tahtihal anhar. Normally in our majalis, all we hear is the streams. In Surah 47 verse 15 said, Allah said, what do you think? One type of stream. So you've worked your socks off for that? And I think, hey, River Thames, go and sit by the River Thames. It's a river. Go to the Mississippi, go to the Nile, go chill there. La 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 la, there's a difference with my rivers. My rivers are rivers, not just water. There's one whole river, that's just pure milk. There's another which is made up of what? Khamr. Now I know that some of you might think, hold on a minute. Are we like going to just be like drunk in Jannah? No, it's not going to be the drink which gets you drunk. It's going to be a bit more soothing. The only reason alcohol is bad for us here is because the disadvantages outweigh the advantages. That's it. Over there, Allah SWT is not going to wait 40 days for something to ferment and then there's no, no, no. There's a nice river. There is a river there, Laban. There's a river there, what? And Hassami Yusuf has a lovely tune. There you go. For who? For Ali, Hussein, and Hassan. Sami Yusuf, this lovely, lovely tune that he has, where he mentions that in Jannah there is a nahar of, where does he get this from? Surah 47, verse number 15. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمُهُ but those are reserved for special ones. Jaza'uhum, Shia of Ali. And I'm sure others. عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ تَجْمِنْ تَحْتِهَا لَأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ We always hear this after the name of like every single person who saw Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنه The killer رضي الله عنه The killed رضي الله عنه the one who cursed you, رضي الله عنه. The one who was the victim of the cursing, رضي الله عنه. Baba, Allah is not just pleased with anyone. You can't be pleased with a person who curses the family of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه and fights them. Allah is pleased with them, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه. And they are pleased with, with Allah? That doesn't make sense. Allah is pleased with them and we are pleased. Who are we doing? Pleased with? No, we are pleased with what Allah gives us, whatever it is. We don't mind. Nahar, alhamdulillah. No Nahar, alhamdulillah. As long as I am next to you in your company, that's enough for me, ya Allah. 
Because the highest level of faith isn't that I want Jannah or Jahannam. It's that I just want to be close to Allah's blessings. That's all. Radi Allah and Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with whatever Allah gives them. Then what does it say? ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ That is for him who fears his Lord. Wait, a religion of Islam is about fear? Oh. Look at it. It says, those who fear their Lord. And people are like, look, you have to fear God for you to get a heaven. I think it's one level. I think in life, if my teacher wasn't someone who had struck in me some fear, I wouldn't revise for the exam when he sets it. If my manager at work doesn't come over and say, listen, you've got targets this week. You, you need that. Your parents, one look. That could have changed your destiny that night. Just one look. Never again. So let's not deny that sometimes that relationship between slave and master is not an indecent relationship or a bad relationship. On the contrary, sometimes discipline made the best monk, the best priest, the best samurai warrior. Ali ibn Talib salam, Amir al-Mumin says, there are those who worship you out of fear of hell. That's the worship of a slave. It's a level to start on. I think it's good. The moment you reach a level where you don't fear the presence of God and the consequences of your action, you're pretty much a dead human walking. Mm. There has to be that little dhamir. If you're going to commit a sin, think about committing the sin. Why am I disobeying? Imam Zahmi says, don't look at the size of the sin, look at who you're disobeying, but also don't be bait about it. Watch me. Because now you've lost that sense of discipline. When it says those who fear their Lord, do you know what the real translation should be? Those who fear their Lord with knowledge. What do I mean with knowledge? Knowledge of their Lord's position. I don't just fear you because you're Allah SWT, because I have the ilm that comes with why I should respect you. Imam Ali salam says there are three types of worshippers. Those who fear you out of, those who want help. They worship you, what? They worship you out of fear of hell. That's the worship of a slave. There are those who worship you because they want heaven. You read this ayah, you're like, Allah, Nahar, Leban, Nahar, Khamor. Every Iraqi's dream is to have a Nahar of Khamor. Can you imagine Nahar, May, this, that? And you're thinking, you know what, I want that. That's it. Then there's another group. Jannah, Jahannam, don't matter. Imam Ali says the highest group. Those who worship you because they found you worthy of being worshipped. You gave them the clear bayina that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And you supplemented him with khayr al bariya What else do we want? As long as I'm in Jannah, no, Jahannam, no. As long as you're pleased with me, whatever you give me at the end is little in return for the bayina and hidayah that you gave me. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. We'll continue next week. By looking at Surah Al-Qadr and see what the intricacies are of the night or nights of power. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. and every one of us makes sacrifices for our lives. We do this to help those that are close to us, like friends and family. This Eid al-Adha, donate to IHDRF, the Imam Hussein charity. We are providing the Biha and Qurbani for Africa, Yemen, and of course, the holy city of Karbala. All meat will be distributed to those impoverished families suffering from hunger. You can donate via our website, www.ihdrf.org. Donate to Karbala today. $250 for a full Qurbani, $125 for a half a Qurbani, and $65 for a quarter Qurbani. Donate at www.ihdrf.org.
especially when you look at it from a perspective that it was only 12, 1300 years ago that by you even shedding a tear mm. for Imam al Hussein, you risked execution. Wow. Was that Baba, yes. Imam al Sadiq, when he would hold the Aza of Imam al Hussein <coughs> in the house, he said, the police of Bani Abbas or Bani Umayyah would come into the house and say, What are your people crying? And we have inside of the hadith that Imam Sadiq would say, Tell to them that a small infant has died in our house, meaning Abdullah al Radi. Mm. Inside of the West, in any Western country, even take a Western country that is mole head, Aslan propagating atheistic behavior. But you cannot be in that same situation that Imam Sadiq was. We have relatively more freedom now to cry, to establish centers, to establish TV. At that time, if you were seen weeping for Imam Al Hussein, Baba, that's an execution order. So we have to realize the value of this relative freedom that we're enjoying. And this freedom, this freedom is a result of the efforts of those scholars before us. As a result of those pioneers before us, it is those gradual efforts over the last hundreds of years that has got us to this place. And if we don't take advantage of this, then there is nothing that we have to pass on to the coming generation what do we have to ask ourselves what heritage are we going to leave for the future the generation to come that they carry the flag of Imam al Hussein forward are we giving them more than what we inherited or are we reducing the efforts of those at the back and regressing so these guys are going to start five steps back the way we were when we started it is through the donations of our viewers through PayPal through credit card, through debit card, pledges that you have. Imam Hussein Media Group is a virtual university that works on a global scale to spread the true message of the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt's peace and blessings be upon them. Imam Hussein TV was established 10 years ago in the city of Isfahan, Iran. We work to cover all aspects of religion, Islamic jurisprudence, politics, philosophy and many more and aim to bring the public's attention to the righteous Islamic sect, Shia Islam. Our ultimate goal as a media group is to convey the interpretations of the Holy Quran as well as the traditions and knowledge of